Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time, either. Well, that was a tough role. That was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl and to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I asked to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of honest age, please guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I heard the folklore story. also be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims. said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. sins we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. How to steal thunder. Well then, Zack, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Quite a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it.
Mr. Francis York Moore. The purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, me, informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. Mr. Francis York Moore, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. So you're the FBI agent, are you? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the General. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happen in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> You kids today don't even know how to ask for something, right? Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zack. He must be loaded. Rich and young. 
a perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. Agent York, you make any progress? Of course, plenty. But tell me, Usha, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was her sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Uh, but don't go too hard on her, okay? You're Isaac and Isaiah's mother? Yes, I'm Lily. I'm FBI Special Agent... Agent York, right? You are good. <laughs> the handsome special agent from the big city. The facial scar trademark. The way you introduce yourself. Everyone's talking about you. Well, I can't say much about the scar. But the way I introduce myself... Zack and I consider it a kind of ritual of sorts. Everyone has their own rituals. It's like always leaving the house left foot first. It's one of those things. You certainly are a funny one. So have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Well, Becky's been taking a couple of days off from work, but aside from that, I heard she was in shock after the murder. But... You think there's something else? Well, I took the boys along to see her today. She's always so kind to them and they love seeing her too. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Yeah! Hey there, FBI. I'm Keith Ingram. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. Okay, York. No problem, man. So, Keith. I hear you run the Milk Barn convenience store. That's right, man. Rock and roll! Do you sell raincoats there by any chance? Yeah, but nobody ever buys them, though. Anyone who wears one of them, I say, just ain't a rocker. But you know, that scar of yours. Now that scar rocks! This scar rocks? <laughs> now that's a new one. I'll drop by your store soon, and let's talk then. Yeah, cool, man! Rock on, FBI! Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested. But I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh. 
Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... No, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. Zack, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zack. Amazing. for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Zack, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to, in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. Hey, good looking. Nice speech. And you are? Oh, I'm Gina. I'm married to Jack. He runs the gas station. Call me the Rose. You look pretty... revealing. Oh, <laughs> this old thing? Oh, you should see some of my other clothes. You? Oh, now you are cool. That scar really is a turn-on. You should come to my station. I'll give you a little extra service. That would be great. I can't believe how expensive gasoline is nowadays. Some extra service would be great. Now, about my current case. Do you have any information on Anna? Have you seen anything suspicious? Oh, I don't know. Talk to my hubby about the difficult stuff, okay? This is getting us nowhere, Zack. I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. What about the FBI? Shut up! At least give me your name. I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. If you want info, it'll cost you. I only talk to Ben Franklin. You know, first impressions are important. I can detain you for a few days, and maybe you'll become more fun to meet. <laughs> <sighs> Zack, 
Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. See you then. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia, Nick's wife. Anna worked at your husband's diner, right? What kind of girl was she? Well, she was a very hard worker. A nice girl. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained, and came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. A criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are the owner of the diner that Anna worked at? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? 
I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic. Gain one and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner and she'd always have a smile on her face, always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. Good evening, Agent. Good evening, Mr... Brian, the Gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Mm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Anna, blonde hair, so bright. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zack. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. So Anna was killed, but why does that bring the FBI here? I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you, but it means the death of a friend to me. And I don't want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. I'm here to apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now, can you? But that doesn't mean you're going to capture the perpetrator yourself. Quint. How do you know my name? I memorize the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. You mean Becky? Don't underestimate the FBI. We know and see everything. I'm sorry if I was a little harsh. I want to help, I do. Okay? Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. I can read him like a book, Zack. You're York, right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the darts bar, Swery 65. How'd you like the town? Oh, it's great. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. Murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Uh, I guess you're right. So, how did you know Anna? I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all. Just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? 
Well, I, I went all through school with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, oh, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. And Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report, too. Okay, then let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right, then. Let's do that. Uh, hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's Diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. sheriff here for a long time now and this is the worst murder I've ever seen our town is a little odd in some ways but it's usually a peaceful place we had our fair share of cases but just the regular stuff a high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn maybe or some hot headed kids fighting fueled on liquor nothing more than that Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life, to eat from or as a urine cup. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls, well, that is one thing. But those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> <clears throat> not sanitary? Uh, that's probably... 
probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, oh, yeah. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nice one. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. Sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course, but still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner, waiting on tables. <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then.